Uh, Escobedo Badola, if you will please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. School committee member and student reports. Ms. Herndon or Ms. Wilder. Um, and they concluded on Friday. Okay, sorry. Um, the past two weeks have been the AP tests, and they ended on Friday. Um, but this week, there are continuing makeup tests if you had two tests in one day or if you were sick and missed one. Um, and this past Saturday was prom, and everyone got home safe, and it was very successful. And the next two days, the 16th and 17th, are going to be the math MCAS for the 10th grade. And the annual relays are this mm -hmm. Thursday. Um, last week at the Scholars Banquet for the class of 2017, they gave out the gold F to 30 people, and the average GPA was a 3.94 among the recipients. <clears throat> um, and so this week is the senior's last full week of school, and the finals start for them next week. Um, so there are three more senior events. Tomorrow night is the Rotary Awards, um, the next night is the Alumni Awards, and then the Senior Awards are May 31st. Um, and then their graduation is the second, and Goodrich Academy graduates on the first. And um, the baseball team is on a winning streak. They're kind of coming back after a couple seasons. So they have three wins in a row right now, and they're on track for um, the state tournament. So That's great. I noticed the column this morning in the paper about that good, that good news. That's great. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. Anything else? Questions from the committee? I'd just like to comment sure. what a great job that baseball team has done after mm -hmm. such two losing seasons, what uh, Coach Casenza and that team has done to, to really turn things around. It's great. I love it. And Wednesday night, right, it's the alumni meeting where we're going to be giving out awards to 112 students. Uh, so please great. attend if you can. I attended the Scholars Banquet, too, and that's a, an impressive group. And I learned that you can, you can go beyond a 4-0. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't think that was mathematically possible, but you can, I, apparently. So, and there are a number of young people who are beyond the 4-0. Uh, school Committee Chair Report, uh, I have none other than to say that tonight we'll be going over uh, the uh, the school budget for this year. Resource committee. There will be nothing for resource right. or school buildings. No report. All right. Resource committee. Nothing. Okay. Yep. School building needs. Nothing. Policy committee. Who's that? Ms. Craigan is not here. Anyone have anything to report? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. Student support committee. Yeah. No. Uh, yes. So we met um, tonight uh, and we covered a lot of old business things that we just wanted to make sure that we were wrapping up this year and just to let people know we've formed an instrumental music task force um, there have been a couple of meetings um, all designed with uh, trying to expand instrumental programming whether it's using gala fund for after school or before school um, extracurriculars or through the school scheduling process itself um, to just really ensure that there's some kind of instrumental instruction at all the schools. Uh, so that's our goal. Um, and uh, the superintendent, we asked if uh, the superintendent could put together a survey to uh, go out to parents, and um, I think over 5,000 emails went out today um, on the list to with the newest survey about communication, how do parents prefer to receive communication. We're trying to get a pulse on who's using Facebook, who's using email, who's looking at district websites, uh, and what information should best be housed in all of those places so that people really have a good connection to, the, to their individual schools but also to the district. Um, and so we'll get results from that survey at our next meeting. Um, we will be hearing, we've asked to, um, and the superintendent uh, decided to put an update on our coordinated program review 
um, which is a comprehensive review of um, special education, 504, and civil rights um, issues in the schools. Um, and uh, we are in the middle of really kind of what has been like a six-year cycle. So we would like to get an update, and we will get an update um, in, in, I'm not sure if we, next meeting um, on that. So, And then uh, we wanted to know how the uh, signs of suicide program rollout went at um, the middle school. Uh, you guys, I'm sure people are kind of he hearing the buzz about this Netflix program, 13 Reasons Why. Um, and uh, obviously social emotional learning is a key element of everything we expect our schools to do still today and um, we wanted to know how that went and what they've done is they've kind of um, worked with some of the like a focus group at the high school um, to really reconfigure how they're going to roll that out I think with this new buzz in this program um, they wanted to kind of take a different approach so stay tuned we're, we're working on some kind of a program to address that level of social emotional um, learning. And then under new business that we wanted to look at, we asked, um, to, uh, wanted to know about uh, teacher turnover rates in individual schools. Um, and what we found is there are, um, there, like three weeks ago, there were some meetings held um, to form some subcommittees to look at some particular issues about discipline in the schools. Um, and so those have formed and we'll be getting updates on that. And the last things we looked at were the gala um, program summaries. So we were looking at the groups that were funded through that gala event, which was a huge success this year. Um, and we'll add thousands more dollars to a pool that um, teachers and staff members can apply to create after school programming and give kids opportunities to do cool events um, throughout the school year. So. That, we're really excited that that program's been a success. Thank you to everybody who went to the gala and supported it. I'm sure the superintendent will talk about that a little bit more. And, um, and then we just kind of looked at some guidelines about moving forward next year and how the gala grants are um, distributed and, and making sure that we're really maximizing the amount of kids who can benefit from that program. So um, a lot of good stuff that the students brought me. Any questions from the committee? None. Thank you, Ms. Lavelle. Very thorough. I appreciate it. Uh, school Personnel Committee, I have one. We are still in negotiations with the nutrition uh, group. Uh, we'll continue forward with that. Executive Committee, there is no need. And we had, we've had uh, the student reports. Uh, we'll move on to approve the minutes of regular school committee meeting for May 1st, 2017. Make a motion. Second. Motion made, seconded to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, it is unanimous. No need for executive session. Communications. We do have an announcement to make. Save the date, folks. DPW Day number nine. And a quote, because little kids love big trucks. Close <laughs> quote. Wednesday, June 7th from 2 to 5 p.m. Rain or shine. Fun for all ages. And this is a note for the adults as well. Please wear your play clothes. <laughs> and it's at the DPW Yard, 301 Broad Street, behind Crocker Field. There'll be a giant sand pile, trucks, bulldozers, snow plows, fire trucks, police vehicles, FATV truck, refreshments, heavy metal DPW art, and jewelry exhibition. Title I program, Fitchburg Public Schools. Fitchburg Public Library's Miss Nicole reads Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. With help from hand puppets from Riverfront Children's Theater, refreshments, and a student art contest. Don't miss it. And bring your money. Um, I think it's all free. Is it? Oh, it is? It's oh. all free. Aren't there, aren't there raffles and things like that? No. Nothing? It's, it's all really? free, and uh, oh. the DPW does a okay. great job of uh, working with the kids. Yeah. And, uh, letting them get on all the trucks and it's, it's a yeah, great it's a great time. thing. Yeah. Great time. What was the date? The second? Uh, or the seventh. Seventh. Okay. Yeah. Seventh. June seventh, two to five p.m. Yep. Uh, public comment. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment on any issues regarding school committee business? Seeing none. 
Move on to the superintendent's report. Okay, we have three guests with us uh, this evening. The first uh, are some guests to talk about the peace poll. So I'll invite them to come up, come to the table here. And the peace poll is right behind our peacemaker, Pete Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> Nickname Peace Stevens. Peace Stevens. <laughs> Peace Stevens. So there you go. Talk about your poll. Hi, my name is Cheryl McGee Stewart. I'm from the Human Rights Commission. And I'm Santa Amiga from the Human Rights Commission. And that's our Peace Poll we're very excited about. It's donated by Marguerite Gabrielli, who is very kind of her. And it's held at the Fitchburg Library. And teachers and can take it out or businesses put it in their business different classrooms there's a lot of um, activities online right. that teachers can incorporate in their classroom lessons and then we have a Facebook page for it hoping that people will put the activities they've done so everybody can read from it it's called um, Fitchburg Human Rights Commission Peace Poll Project on Facebook and um, like I said, there's a lot of activities, a lot of ways of incorporating it to the classroom. And our first event for the Peace Poll that we're going to do as an activity is mixed with the um, Fitchburg Public Library. It'll be at the Children's Library. The date is June 17th from 11 to 2. And we're going to have an education event. We're going to talk, talk about peace and what peace means to us. And Wani Tech is going to make us little mini Peace Polls so the children can decorate them, tabletop ones from wood. And um, Expresso's Pizza is going to donate pizza to us. So we're going to have a really fun day talking about peace with the children, ages 4 to 13. So we're hoping that people will love to come to that. Thank you. Any comments from the committee? Yes. So um, I was just reading who's on the commission. Are there students on the commission? There are going to be, yes. Okay. Is that, are, are you... Making the appeal to all the schools or to a certain age group, or um, I believe they did do that. Yes, it's Fitchburg High School. A couple students that are on the list. Um, yeah, Dina Talley, you'd know better because you're in the process of um, approving those. The students, students, Fitchburg High students. Oh yes. yes. Oh yeah. That's we got it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. <coughs> okay, Thanks, thank folks. you very much. Appreciate Thanks. it. Good luck. And uh, we try to have students here uh, and staff for presentations of things going on in the school. So our first presentation are the Rad Kids and their garden projects. So, uh, and I think with the Rad Kids, not among, not the Rad Kids, uh, are uh, Sue Terigny and Kelly Morrison. So bring on the rad kids. I'm going to play a um, slideshow just in the background because it will help to tell the story of what we have going on. So I am the program director for the 21st century, and we have three programs, uh, uh, one's at Longshow, one's at Crocker Elementary School, and then South Street is one of our newest projects. And all three programs are wrapping up for the school year. And we started in December with a project-based learning workshop that we attended. And um, it was provided by the DESE and came back with a lot of really strong ideas that we wanted to share and share with the kids. So it started out with just recycling. And then we led into the spring with a gardening program. So we have um, growing places as a partnership. Hmm. And then from that, we decided, well, what can we do? Um, I applied for a small grant called um, Jane Goodall Roots and Shoots. And from that, I got a $200 gift card. So we were able to purchase three new beds. Kelly's husband works at Monty Tech in the wood shop, so he built the beds. Oh, um, so we did it on a Saturday morning. <laughs> in the rain, it was a lot of fun. And then um, that led to more ideas so um, I invited Angelo Bezal City Councilor Angelo Bezal into the school and he met with the students and talked all about um, the bird houses that he built mm. and he came in he didn't just bring the bird houses and leave them he came in and did a whole lesson about all the different variables what birds would go to which type of house if you paint it this color or that type <coughs> color he uh, um, asked us to number the bird houses when we put them up 
and kids could actually sit and do a study. So it was a whole educational approach that um, Angelo Bezal did, which was amazing. And the kids were just so excited. So those birdhouses are going up. Um, in addition, we also had um, the art teacher work on stepping stones. Those will be in the garden. And the Girls on the Run program um, decided for their service project that they were going to create a chalkboard that can be hung outside so that kids could use the chalkboard. Did it not Sorry, play? I didn't get started. Okay. All the kids are talking. It'll, it didn't just... I'm just trying to hit the play button. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, oh. this mouse was a little messed up here. Okay. Um, so the um, Girls on the Run project did the chalkboard, and that's going to be installed. And then um, we're hoping to have a pop-up library there as well. We reached out to the PTO, and I was told today that we have two picnic tables, two brand-new picnic tables that are being delivered. So this whole project turned into um, a, a space that was just okay, but now it's going to be amazing. <laughs> um, it's going to be a nice place for um, teachers to take their students so that it becomes like a, a living classroom. It'll be a place for parents in out-of-school time hours. They can come and visit. They can pick from the garden. Um, and um, there's just a, a lot going on in that space. And so on June 1st, we're going to be having a celebration and dedication and that's when we'll be having the rad kids graduation as well so we brought students to talk about their projects and what they've done so we'd like to introduce them this is kelly kelly is um the, one of the site coordinators at south street and she works with becky mackey and we love having this program at our school it just it makes the the school come alive we're adding color to the building and getting so many experiences that the kids do during the after school time that just doesn't fit in during the day. Mm -hmm. So I like to tell the kids that they're the leaders of our school. So we have some of the leaders here to talk with you. <laughs> and kids, do you want to come up? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what does RAD stand for? RAD Kids is with the police department, and they teach the kids how to defend themselves. Oh, it's so. like a stranger danger class. Yeah, yeah. okay. Alex, yeah. Alex Schultz is a fourth grader. Come on up. Come Alex. on up to the <coughs> sit, sit up here to the microphone. And Alex is in RAD Kids, and Alex, you can talk about what you've learned. Have him sit down yep, so we can come hear on him. Over. Come on up. Don't be shy. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the the <laughs> so what's something that you have learned about? Um, Self-defense moves to defend you like sleep kick, um, high hammer fist, low hammer fist, and more. Now, who's, who's teaching you these things? Officer Harrell and Officer... <laughs> we get the... Do you want to say again? Who's teaching you? Officer Hurdle and Officer LeQueer. Hmm. Is it fun to have real, live policemen in helping you guys learn about this? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have, thank you, Alex, we have Adrian Moreno. He's a second grader, right? Yeah. And he's working in the garden. And do you want to tell them what you're making in the garden? Um, I'm making a stepping stone. Oh. I um, painted a flower on it. Nice. Is that one of your stepping stones up there or no? Mine has a flower on it. OK. Yeah. Oh, these are the cement stepping stones that will be in the garden? Yes. yes. Wow. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They're certainly mm -hmm. works I of love art. the tarantula. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Amarali Mabeji. And Beji. And Beji. And he's a third grader. And you're in Rad Kids, right? Yes. And you want to talk about Rad Kids? Um, in Rad Kids, we mostly learn about self defense, like, um, we learn how to defend ourselves from bad people. Like, if someone's trying to grab you and you have no way, you can sweep kick them and you can just run away. Good. Good. That's good. Good. 
Sounds Thank like you. a good strategy. Thank you, Amarelli. <laughs> this is Kaliana Moreno, Adrian's older sister, and she's a fourth grader, and she's in the Garden Club, right? Hi. Um, in the Garden Club, we we get to have, like, we get to plant the things that we like to plant. We get to have the opportunity to cook things that are healthy and that are good for your body with less sugar and fattening stuff. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. That's good. Right. And last but not least <laughs> is Shania Norris, and she's in third grade, and she's in both Brad Kids and the Garden Project. I'm in both too. You're in both too. Oh. Me too. So go ahead, <laughs> Shania. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and tell them what you like in either of the programs. What I like um, in Rad Kids that um, we um, can learn a lot of um, steps and moves to learn um, how to defend ourselves to be safe around strangers and um, other places without a grown up and every play any every um, every place that you um, are without a grown up you have to be near a grown up or you can just get taken or something. Mm -hmm. Good. What about the garden project? Anything that you like to talk about that? Well, the garden, um, we, um, we can um, plant so many different kinds of fr fruit or vegetables, mostly vegetables we planted. And um, we get to um, we um we all get um, turns to um cut um cut vegetables or um help cook with the meals. Good job. Good job. Did you guys do this last year? Did you grow things last year? Mm, Did you use yeah. the garden last? No. No. So this is going to be the first time you like going to plant the seeds and see them grow. Really? Or we can just take the um the plant that's yeah. already grown and just put it in. Put it in there. There you go. Want to tell That's them what great. you planted today? That's exciting. Hey. Do you remember what you planted today? Oh, yeah, it was strawberries. What it, we planted. Strawberries. strawberries. Yeah. Watch okay. those things will really take off. Yeah. Are you going to come back with those when they're... When yeah. they're <laughs> 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 Bring us back some strawberries. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the time. So. Yeah, so on June 1st at 4 o'clock, we're going to start the ceremony. We have a little group of students that are going to do a musical performance. Yes. That'll give um, Officer B time to get the kids outfitted and ready for their graduation. And then we'll go down into the gymnasium and watch that. And then we're going to go back out into the garden and do like a little dedication ceremony. By then, everything will be out and in I place. And um, you'll see the <laughs> birdhouses that the students created and the stepping stones and all of the things that they've worked really hard to make um, that area such a fun place to be. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, it should conclude around, oh, we have pizza and um, you can view all the exhibits that the kids have created throughout the school year. And that will be um, just a little bit after five and then we'll have dinner. Um, parents and guests are invited to have pizza and salad with us. Right. And then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> and that's the last day of programming for the elementary school. Yeah. Yes. Questions? Yes. For the rat kids, you guys, when you're learning these moves, are you learning them with other students or are you learning them with the police officer, an adult yeah. size person? Pretty much um, the adult. Okay, so you're learning how to do this act or this maneuver on an adult? Yeah. Not you, know, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I. Police officers you, all. Right, you've been up. to Crocker's. Yeah. Yeah. Graduation. So Officer Beef comes dressed in body armor. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and what he does is he'll, he will go after a child. He'll say, you know, hello, little boy, come with me. I want to show you my puppy. And then they will defend themselves, whether right. it's an arm block or a kick. And then they run away and they know what to do next, which is call 911 and things like that. So it's a whole scripted um, right. curriculum that they learn and it's things about not not to go near stray dogs um, what to do if somebody approaches you that you don't know um, what to do if somebody grabs you how you can defend yourself so it's a, it's an excellent program and it's all through the 
um, Fitchburg Police Department. They've been at Crocker for um, the past year and a half, and they're just starting to work with the students now at South Street. Yeah. So it's a great program. We're, we're, just, yeah. we're just very fortunate with our Fitchburg Police Department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do so much for our students. Mm -hmm. And Officer Hurdle, I remember her when she was your, your side. I she, had her as a student. And she graduated <laughs> from Fitchburg High School, and Officer Beef graduated from Fitchburg High School, and they continue to give back to the school system. So okay, maybe well. that's where you're going to be one of these days. <laughs> Officer Hurdle was also a student of mine at Fitchburg State. Oh, boy. <laughs> so if you could just remind, send me a reminder, and then I can forward the invitation to the school committee and anybody else. So. Okay. Yeah, I had Definitely. a formal okay. printed out one, a nice Perfect. one. Perfect. Definitely want to be there. <laughs> it's in my calendar. I'll be there. Uh, okay, great job, guys. <laughs> Mrs. Ter I want to say something about Mrs. Terrigny. She took me on a tour of the 21st Century uh, program at South Street. When was that? So a couple, um, maybe three or four months ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's great things going on there. We should all take a take a moment, go out and and uh, and observe what uh, what these young folks are doing. So we should uh, hopefully someday we'll be able to expand it. Well, you know? we, well, we applied yeah. for uh, Memorial. Memorial Middle School. Right. So Good. If we get that, that, we get that, that would be one. we'd be up to yeah. four schools again. So we're that's we're right. climbing there back. You go. And the, um, the Longjo uh, Middle School is up for a renewal, so we're working on that grant process as well. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank so much. Thank, Thank you. And um, I got an email from uh, Ellen Gamel uh, the other day, and uh, she bumped into Mr. Stevens and was talking about a program that the seniors have been doing at the high school. She wasn't on the agenda, but the seniors are going to be gone yeah. by the time we meet again. So. Uh, I took an administrative privilege and invited her to come and talk about uh, this program of project-based learning that's going on at the high school. So, Ellen, thanks for coming. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm an English teacher at Fitchburg High, and all of you have an invitation. So I figured I would take a minute and explain what this is. And it was kind of neat that Sue commented about project-based learning because that's exactly what this is. So at the high school, second semester seniors, uh, they've got that one foot out the door. So I wanted to do something that would address the English language arts standards as well as some of the ideas of collaboration and critical thinking and problem solving and the idea of being part of the community. So um, this particular program was developed by the Buck Institute for Education and I adapted it for our students. They're solving the problem of how do we revitalize Main Street and we worked with Mary Jo Bohart at the um, economic development. She came to school. We did a walking tour of Main Street. The mayor had met us when we were doing that. The students had to come up with a business idea and they actually proposed it to loan officers. So the whole concept of authentic audience, making it not just for the teacher, but making it real. So over the past couple months, they've been working on this. It is now coming to the final project exhibit where we will have seven business proposals on display at Fitchburg State College on Thursday. That's what this invitation is for. It's an exhibit for the hour, so it's a come and go, walk in. Uh, we have a student who put together a making of the project video that will be on a continuous loop. It's about a 15 minute video. And the idea is that we're hoping people come and talk to the students talk to them about Main Street they're really embracing this idea of I live here how can I make it better and that was something I really wanted them to embrace I live in the city love the city I want them to feel the same way about it so I just wanted to say come down if you can make it stop in um, talk to the students ask them what they learned ask them how their business could actually become reality I told them hey Maybe an entrepreneur will come, like your idea, and run with it. You never know. So. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank I have you. some extra invitations. Yeah. I don't know if I want to leave yeah, them here. Them and, yeah. Could I just and, ask that? So yeah. um, the proposals, um, so did they put forth like an original idea, and then it got reviewed by other people? And, and so they were broken into teams. Yep. So there were four students per team. They each had to do a preliminary business idea. I then had a loan officer from Webster First, Santander, Enterprise and Workers come to school 
and listened to their business proposals. And then the bank officer chose the one that they think would be the most likely to succeed, mm -hmm. so to speak. The other three proposals for the team got pushed aside, and then the team focused all their energies on that one proposal. Okay. Um, they did a more elaborate business proposal. They focused on, um, we brought in the English stand standards of rhetoric and the idea of persuasive language. They did advertisements, websites. Um, et cetera, and now they're having a visual presentation of that one business that got selected. And these are just students that are in, like, your class? This isn't, like, a standard that all... No, nope, this, is, this, is this, is uh, this is a senior CPA class, so um, not remedial, not honors, the, the middle-of-the-road average kid, um, that it's not something... That the project is not part of the curriculum, the standards are part of the curriculum, focusing on the writing that they did with the persuasive writing, the, um, the idea of communicating visually with the advertisement and the website, those types of things are part of the curriculum. But the way I presented it to them is kind of new. So mm -hmm. That's good. That's great. Got to try something new, especially second semester seniors. They're tough. They're tough. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Got that one foot out the door and trying to keep them in. And they're, they're, they're very excited. And I have to be honest, not all 12 teams are going to be there on Thursday. They just, they weren't ready for that authentic audience. Um, so there's eight teams that are going on Thursday. And those eight teams are beyond excited to present that. So, yeah, so we want people to show up because you always hate to plan a party and then nobody shows up. <laughs> I think that would be really bad. So spread the word. And we're hoping we, to get some foot traffic, too, because we're right at the college at the Hammond Lounge. Well, like thank you. There. Good. Thank you. Hey, great. great. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, is, is it possible oh, yeah. uh, that we could get a shot in version at a future school committee meeting in, in June? Or, or a short version of, like, how it went? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because I, I already told you I like to get the thing, but I'm going to be gone yeah, out of definitely. state. Definitely. Um, also, if you're at this, the website on the back is the project website. So if you want to take a look at that, it's got the pictures on there. The mayor's mug is on there a couple times. Um, the, the interviews with the loan officers, etc. There's all kinds of information on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mug. Thank Your you. mug. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Great. And you uh, talked about planning a party and hoping that people come, and that was the segue to the gala. Uh, the gala was a smashing success. Uh, right now, we've still got a little bit of revenue coming in, uh, but we made $22,000, uh, which is quite a bit more than last year. Uh, when expenses are done, we hope to we hope to be able to use between fifteen and seventeen thousand uh, for. Um, after school programs. So these will be grants that will go out again first beginning of September to any staff member uh, who would like to uh, pursue a passion and have a 10 week program uh, in starting in the fall. So that was just really great and thank you to everybody who worked on it, all the attendees, everything. Um, from, we have a donation, a technology donation of 24 HP compact computers. Uh, for total value of $179 each, and there are 15 of them. We also have a donation from the Fay Club um, of $3,223. That was at a fundraiser uh, for uh, books, and that is a donation to South Street Elementary School. There are action items on that. Uh, we have a donation to Fitchburg High School uh, actually, it's a, a grant that was applied for from the University of Rochester, the Singer Award. Not Singer as in singing, but I think it's Singer as in uh, company, uh, for $2,500. And that will go towards the principal's account for field trips, AP programming, any kind of incentives. And then in school choice, you all saw Dick Vaughn's uh, request. We, last year, Fitchburg Public Schools had the largest number of students in any school in Massachusetts sent to Boys and Girls State. Mm -hmm. uh, and we hope to keep that first place standing. Um, so there were, I think, three students, three or four students who had yet to be funded. Um, I'm recommending that we fund two of them out of school choice. So there's an action item there for um, $700 
to fund two students to go to Boys and Girls State. And I talked to Dick, was at the Scholars Dinner the other night, and there is um, there is movement in the works to fund all of the students, and I said if they fall short a small amount of money to get back to me that they shouldn't finish up or not have someone go. Um, because this is, as you know, incredible experience, and uh, more than once, one of our students has been the, the student to go to Washington, D.C. Um, and represent, you know, uh, the whole state. Girls' state, we had somebody, uh, Upson, Gabby Upson, mm -hmm. and then Michael Richard was, uh, was the boy. So, good stuff. Any questions on any of those? Okay. Um, so, you have a handout of the slides. Uh, tonight is the first budget presentation. There are two uh, for review, and then, and then there'll be a final one uh, for vote. So I'm going to do some of the slides, and then Bob is going to do other slides. Uh, I'm presenting this, but it was not something that I did on my own. Um, cabinet has had half a dozen or more meetings on the budget. Uh, as you know, uh, it's been a moving target. Uh, at one time, we thought we had a $3 million deficit. You'll see that we were closer to two. Uh, and we have been working very hard to have a balanced budget uh, with the least impact that we can have. We've also met with all of the principals. We had individual meetings with each principal, looking at their school, looking at what their needs were, and then we came together and we've probably had two or three general meetings of the cabinet um, and um, the principals. So just as a refresher, um, everything that we, we um, focus on is out of our accelerated improvement plan. Uh, we redid it in uh, FY15. So the plan we have now is between FY15 and 18. Uh, if you want to stop me at any point with a question, just kind of raise your hand and I'll know to stop. So our first strategic objective was to ensure high quality curriculum and instructional practice. Um, the big piece of that were units of study in reading and writing through K to four. So that work has been underway and we are well underway of having strong units of study in that. And then a focus on STEM. And that's um, in K to eight. And a big component of that were those life science center grants that we have brought before you that has allowed us to develop, you know, some real uh, focused STEM initiatives with uh, labs and all. And then the last one is the early childhood literacy initiative, which is the Footsteps to Brilliant, which we just rolled out a couple of weeks ago. The second strategic objective was use a collaborative inquiry process through PLCs and data meetings to close the achievement gap. A lot of this language is going to sound familiar because when you had all the principals come in front of you, you kept hearing terms like PLC, professional learning community, data team meetings, all of that. So we've, a lot of the work that we've been wanting to do has been to vertically align math uh, grades 5 through 12, and as you know, we have a major uh, collaboration with Mass Insight, uh, and we have a team of people that are meeting. Uh, it is being managed through central office and through the principals of the schools, and uh, a team of teachers d d uh, developing a vertical alignment in math from grades 5 through 12. And then, uh, as you heard from the elementary principals, we've also been targeting elementary data meetings, and uh, one of the principals talked a lot, uh, John Thompson talked a lot about then not only meeting with his teams in data meetings, but when I've been working with him on his evaluation and talking to him about what's going on in his school, he has met with every single teacher and reviewed the data for that, uh, for that individual teacher. Uh, the third ad objective is to ensure job embedded professional development focused on student outcomes. Um, you've heard all of the principals talk about inclusion. 
and you've heard them also talk about team teachers in schools, a special education teacher and a general education teacher working together. So we've continued that work of inclusion. Um, that goes back five years to um, one of our keynote speakers was Dr. Hare uh, from Harvard who came and that's when we started talking about the only way we were going to move the needle for special education population was to move towards inclusion. Uh, an introduction of virtual and augmented online learning. Um, we had that, where was it where we were demonstrating? Oh, at the <coughs> Urban Superintendents Network. So we have been working on that. The team of Jessica, uh, Eileen, Dina. Paula, Dina. I think yes. Dina, Eva. D D your whole, basically the whole tech team yeah. has been working on this uh, idea. And I think we brought one here one night, mm -hmm. uh, the virtual goggles. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the Urban Superintendents Network was doing a big presentation with the Department of Education there. Uh, and I volunteered our team to come and do a demonstration. So last Friday, um, our team presented to all the superintendents in the urban superintendents in Massachusetts with their curriculum directors, and there was a big contingent there from the Department of Education. So uh, they got to virtually and in reality see <laughs> what the kinds of things that are going on um, in Fitchburg. It was really interesting to see all these superintendents with virtual goggles at budget time. Um, Sheltered content instruction with a focus on the middle school's writer's workshop. Again, when you were listening to your uh, middle school principals come and talk about what was going on in their school, this was a big focus, that writing, 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 writing. The objective number four, maximize the use of educator eval to enhance student outcomes. We're in year five or six of educator eval. Um, everything that we've been doing is continuing. The piece that's a little bit new and different is that real focus on formative assessments. Summative assessments would be your final exam. It's what comes at the end. The formative assessment is what happens periodically to test. Okay, are they understanding it? So we have both very formal formative assessments like Galileo and other kinds of assessment tools, but then you also have the formative assessments that every teacher you know, is creating in their own classrooms. So that's where the focus has been this year, on what are the formative assessments that all of our staff, whether they're art teachers or science teachers or math teachers, are creating. And then the last one is to ensure a healthy school climate and culture that recognizes the social emotional needs of our students. For two years, I've had, as our guest speaker, a focus on social emotional learning, uh, one of the speakers was from um, Yale University, their Center for Social Emotional Growth. We've had um, Jessica Minahan, again, you heard that name a lot from our principals. Um, she is the best of the best when it comes to this area, and at least two or three of our schools have had uh, book readings on with her. I think Rheingold has brought her in to work professionally with the staff. Um, so we're accessing uh, really good professional development. Um, the responsive classroom last summer, uh, we've had a turnover of staff. We have a lot of new staff across the district. There had been a lot of focus and training on responsive classroom years ago. We have two of our own trainers, Bonnie Bear, C-Mac, and also Kathy Brady was one of our trainers. So this past summer, they did, um, Bonnie did a training for about 50 staff members in responsive classroom. And then I had asked to spell out this acronym and I didn't do it because I can never remember what BRIGHT stands for. Paula, do you remember what the acronym no. BRIGHT stands for? No, but it's a reorientation program for students who are coming back to Fitchburg High who may have been hospitalized or, mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's a really focused on social emotional confidence building as they reintegrate to the mainstream. And kind of bridging that gap of coming back into school. Um, and then uh, there have been book studies uh, on, on school culture and student engagement. And these again are, are comments and words you've heard, motivation. Jeremy talks a lot about grit. Uh, uh, that was one of the, name, the things that came out in the uh, 
scholars dinner when uh, Colleen Hiron was calling out to the students and saying what words come to mind you know grit growth mindset and also the Red Raider way were some of the things so you really get this sense if you repeat this stuff long enough and you stay consistent with it uh, it has an impact so those are the five objectives any questions on the objectives so this is an updated slide on uh, Fitchburg High's academic progress. Um, the dropout rate at Fitchburg High has remained at 1.8% for a few years now, which is below, below the state dropout rate. Now, when you think of that, that state dropout rate is based on all of the schools across the state. So Fitchburg High has been able to bring the dropout rate. It was in the double digits 10 years ago, double digits and now it's down to 1.8%. The graduation rate rose from 81.8 to 86.1 this past, in one year, and that's just below the state average. So some really good stuff happening there. And we met with Jeremy this morning uh, for an hour or so uh, because we have a group that's working with the high school right now to look at next steps. How do, what do we do next to get to the next level of growth? And one of the things that came out was that when the staff there decide as a group that they're going to go after something, they really go after it. And as you know from Jeremy's presentations, attendance and dropout and graduation mm -hmm. have been the big focus for the staff at the high school. And, and they've really made some progress. Uh, the other place, and you've heard this now so many times, has just been the increase in the number of AP exams, students taking AP from 135 in 2012 to 550, from um, 78 participating to 250. So huge jumps in the numbers. And one that we haven't talked so much about has been the number of students um, being enrolled in at least one dual enrollment course went from 10 to over 100. Nice. And that dual enrollment, that is money in the bank. Mm -hmm. Because for every student who's able to do that dual enrollment and get a passing grade, mm -hmm. that means that's a course that they will have less to take at the university. And that means savings for the family. And then just a kind of reiteration, because I think we forget <laughs> what we offer here the 21st century that we just talked about tonight, uh, and then we were applying for another school, which would give us four schools. Half of our schools would have a 21st century program. The work that's going on at Goodrich Academy, it was great. I just saw a tweet or something on Facebook about the senior week you know, at Goodrich Academy and the kinds of fun things that those students are doing, because I forget, we forget. Oh yeah, there's a senior week going on at Fitchburg High. There's a senior week going on at Goodrich Academy too. Um, and uh, they also, that the prom that was talked about today, we've had a joint prom now for years. The students at Goodrich are part of the prom at Fitchburg High. The Advanced Academic Learning Initiatives. We implemented those coaches five years ago and they're still in place. An academic learning coach at every elementary school and at every middle school. The dual enrollment, the district-wide musical that's in its uh, fifth year. We just finished the fifth year. The full sports offering, middle school sports for all students for no fees. So that, uh, and I have to say, I've got to thank Mr. Stevens that some of that's helping that baseball team. Yep. Because we, yep. have, a, we yep. have a feeding program. Yep. Eight years ago, seven years ago, I talked to Ray Casenza, and he didn't know where we were going to go because we had no feeding program. So students were showing up at the high school not having played in some of these sports. Jean. I would just say there, there is a nominal fee, but it, it also is um, possible that if people right. can't afford it, they, right. yeah. So it's nothing like surrounding districts where you know, people are paying like $400 to be in an activity. And that's not even just athletics, that's any activity. So it's incredible that we can offer that. Mm -hmm. But I do want to just call out, like, we depend, like, I'm, we're, we're, I think everybody on the school committee is so committed to after school programming. 21st century program is federal grant. And people need to be aware that if federal programming is cut, that's going to decimate opportunities for kids in cities like Fitchburg. And I think 
people, I mean, this is, this is, our school system is tremendous in that it writes these grants and it competes to get these grants. But if these grants aren't even offered, then all the competition in the world isn't going to help. So it's just something that people should know. Just as a number, what kinds of numbers are we talking about every year, the 21st century grants? So anywhere from 60 to about $140,000 a site. Per school. Per school. So it declines yeah. over a number of yeah. years, but so for three sites, it's well over a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. That's coming in. And, and actually, 21st century was, by label, one of the cuts, the federal cuts mm -hmm. that was thrown out right. there. And we've done a lot through the GALA program, through as many innovative things as we can to offer after school programming. But I, I really think it's time for people to understand funding and, and advocate for that. So. Well, and that's why I'm reviewing some of this. Yep. You know, we know it. We live it every day. But there are lots of people out there that don't know it. Uh, and then I added the new one, and that is the GALA-funded uh, after-school yep. grants. Uh, there were at least nine programs funded. Probably 50 to 60 students, additional students, got an after-school opportunity through the funding of those grants. Uh, very pleased about this. As you know, we had the big rollout of uh, Fitchburg Flourishes. And this is the widget. This is the status widget. I went on this um, at 145 today. And our students, since, since the challenge, because my challenge to them was to read 3 million words, to know 3 million words by September, they're already up to 614,477. And I would bet that if you checked it live right now, it's, it's changed. So I'm going to have to up it, I think. I think I was really lowballing them with 3 million. I think we're going to have to probably go to five. But it's a great little widget. It's right on the Fitchburg Public Schools website. And it shows that little tally. You know, the red gets taller and taller uh, as more kids read, learn the word count and read the books. So just to break, is this where? I think this is where I'm shifting to you. Okay. okay. <laughs> So as Andre shifts over to me, uh, I just want to thank the, the cabinet as well because this is really a true team effort in addition to the principals, the directors, uh, the finance team downtown, and the, um, op the staff in the business office. So really, uh, at this point, this is where, just as a general introduction, this is what I call the five buckets of funding uh, for the school district. So first of all, we have the city funds, which is the uh, also equivalent to the net school spending formula, uh, which is comprised of direct spending, which you as school committee members approve on June 15th. And then there's indirect expenses, health insurance, retirement costs, school resource officers, things of that nature that are held at the city level. So this year, or I should say next year, FY18, we're looking at a budget of net school spending budget of $66.7 million the budget that you as school committee members will be voting on to finalize uh, on June 15th will be $54.2 million. Uh, that's a number that we are in agreement with the city for the direct spending. Uh, the Chapter 70 funds that the city receives is a little over $49 million, and we'll talk about that. That's 81% of the net school spending, and the Chapter 70 as a percentage of what you vote on is about 92% of the budget. The, the second bucket of uh, funding that we receive that really is not uh, something that the school committee votes on as part of the, the budget that I showed you earlier is what's called circuit breaker. And these are funds that are provided to, I'll say, virtually every district in, in the Commonwealth to help offset costs of special education. Uh, so these funds are, help cover out-of-district tuitions, uh, could cover special education transportation costs, uh, in district uh, services for students uh, with needs. Um, we estimate a budget next year of about 1.75 million. Uh, the Commonwealth is projecting a 1.4% increase. And um, unlike city funds, where we have to spend all those funds every year, if we don't spend the funds in Circuit Breaker, we can carry them over into the following year. Okay. The third bucket of money is uh, really the grants, federal and state grants. We we're talking about 21st century earlier, Gene. Um, again, that the, the origin of those funds are at the federal level. Uh, Title I, we are a Title I district. Title IIA, Title III. 
Um, and then we have the extended learning time grant, which is Long's Joe. Uh, we're projecting about 5.9 million, and I'll talk a little bit further on about where the, uh, where the trend has been over the last 10 years. And then school choice funding. We have funds going out uh, that follow our students, and we have uh, funding that comes in when parents uh, and students elect to come to Fitchburg. Uh, so it's projected to be a little bit over a million dollars next year, um, and in June, um, in addition to the city budget, the 54.2 million, uh, you'll be voting on proposed uh, investments uh, from this funding source, and um, typically it includes textbooks, instructional supplies, the advanced uh, academic learner initiative, coaches at the middle school level only, uh, tech and technology investments across the district. And just as a reminder, during a very bad budget season five years ago, <laughs> I want to say, we moved all of the textbooks and instructional supplies out of the city budget into school choice uh, because those are not salaries, um, they are supplies. Um, and just as a reminder to staff, no matter how many times I say it, if they need supplies, they need to ask their principal if their principal can't provide it, then the principal will ask me. And if there are supplies that they need to do their work, we will go to school choice and provide that. That's what school choice uh, is for. So we need to just keep reminding everybody that they need the materials and the resources to do the work that they have to do. Okay. Um, another source of funding is uh, capital, largely facilities related. Uh, just a little bit of a summary, as you all know, uh, we installed two solar arrays, one at Rheingold, one here at Memorial. Rheingold is up and running. Uh, there have just been some connection-related issues and location of the transformer issues here at Memorial. That will be up and running this month. Uh, the city also has made a, an appropriation uh, approved last month at City Council to repair a retaining wall over at South Street and the middle school. Memorial uh, Middle School Auditorium seating. Uh, we'll be opening or finalizing the selection of that vendor this week uh, with the work to be completed this summer. Um, we're investigating and gathering information on uh, some additional projects right now, an upgrade to the high school's audio visual system, uh, the handicap lift over at uh, Rheingold. We just signed a, uh, a contract with a designer last week. Uh, the vacuum compressor pump at Long's Joe. Um, we're waiting for some more information from our engineer there, and also we're gathering some information on a phone system uh, that is um, pretty old. And lastly, uh, Crocker Elementary School has been accepted into the feasibility stage uh, at MSBA, and that can be a three to five year process until something is concluded there. So. So I want to say here in this slide, some of these um, expenses were going to be in the regular budget. Um, and one of the big ones is the repair of the South Street retaining wall. Uh, as you go down to the parking lot, there's a staircase there and that wall is collapsing inward. Uh, that's not an option. It's not cosmetic. It needs to be fixed. Um, that would have come out of the school budget. And in a meeting with the mayor uh, and his finance team, that and some other capital components were taken over by the city. And they'll be part of, so you'll see later on, that helped reduce my deficit because we had a much larger deficit because these were things that needed to be done. But they're, they're, they're of a structural nature and a facility nature, and if we'd had to pay for them out of the regular budget, that would have meant educational services that would have had to be reduced. So that was just one of the many meetings that we have with the city talking about these kinds of things. And I thought you'd like to see um, a little picture of the seats that are finally coming. Uh, there's one in my office, so if you'd like to come and actually sit in it, we have a sample. Um, but this is something that's been a long time coming. This auditorium is central to the city. Mm -hmm. It's in a school now that's in really good shape, and the seating is deplorable. It's probably the original seating. The seats are torn. The springs are popping out. And every time there's an event, I get at least one phone call or email from somebody about this. So this is uh, capital 
uh, funding that we'll be using for this. Uh, these are, they're kind of like what's in a ballpark, but much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But they can't be ripped, torn, written on, or anything else. Uh, but for an hour and a half play, they'll be perfectly comfortable. So the goal will be that um, we will have these installed here in the auditorium. Um, we're looking to the same type of a funding mechanism to recarpet, and then we're working with the green team or the veterans team to come in this summer and completely repaint um, the whole auditorium so that in September, the, not only the school, but the city will have a local central venue with great parking and good lighting where people can uh, use for functions. And we already do rent the facility, but now I think we'll have an even better opportunity to, uh, to, to rent the facility when it's not being used by the schools. Okay, so uh, getting back to the budget. So what I thought I'd do is just put together a little bit of context and background here for all of you. And uh, if we, let's just look at the, uh, the yellow line and the, um, the axis on the right-hand side of the screen. That's enrollment. So over the last four years, our enrollment has increased from about 5,400, uh, and now it's projected to be a little bit over 5,700 uh, for next year's funding. Uh, and over the last year, our enrollment grew 111 students. Uh, and the year before that, it was about 150 students. Um, I've been in the district now for nine years, and uh, along with Andre, uh, some of the earlier years, we did not have enrollment increases. And it made, from this point in the presentation onward, much more challenging. So uh, increasing enrollment is really, uh, I'll say, a positive driver for, for the budget and for the district. So the, the blue bars are the direct spending that the school committee approves. The red bars are the, uh, the net school spending um, that the Commonwealth uh, sets for Fitchburg. So the trend going up and to the right is a good thing. So, okay. And uh, this is just a slide that we've shared with you before and at resource subcommittee meetings. Again, um, the, the print is pretty small. Uh, but our Chapter 70 funding is increasing by just about $2.3 million uh, for next year. Again, 111 student increase. Uh, that's very important for us as we move forward. So. so you see the top line over on the right, change 111, the second column from the, the right. So then it shows you what the increases are based on that. So a district that has an enrollment flat or enrollment decrease really gets hurt. We know what that feels like because for the first three or four years I was here, every year was enrollment flat or enrollment down, which means no additional money coming in. Okay, so really just to uh, extrapolate a little bit uh, on the prior slide and probably a with a little bit bigger type, you know, the, the, the budget that the school committee again will be approving is 54.2 million. Um, I call it the, the direct spend. Uh, then there's indirect charges uh, of about 17.8 million. Uh, we subtract transportation because that is not an eligible expense for net school spending to get to the 66.7 million. Uh, again, as, as uh, mentioned earlier, the grants, we estimate about 5.9 million. So all in all, the, the funding from those two sources uh, will be about 72.6 million. And then you could add on the 1.7 million as well for um, the circuit breaker and another million for school choice. Bob, I, I, yep. I wanted to say something that, that to, to, the, uh, to the school committee. This is the second consecutive year that we've met net school spending. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, this year we've exceeded net school spending. This year we will. So you should be proud of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Because right, that's a commitment from this administration mm -hmm. to the schools. Uh, and it's not easy, easy to achieve. What Bob was talking about and Andre were talking about the capital expenditures, that doesn't happen by magic. That has to be presented to the council. And, and I believe, and I always will believe, that those expenditures belong to the city because these buildings and the schools are ours. So we need to take care of them. But that frees you up yeah. to do what you're paid to do mm -hmm. and educate the kids. Well, not everybody believes that. Yeah. And if that were the case, if that had not been the case, let's just take that South Street wall. I right. have to fix that. That means I'd be making almost $300,000 more of cuts in That's staff, right. 
teachers, mm -hmm. any other staff members. And what people need to understand is there are different buckets here. So sometimes you see big numbers in facilities or maintenance or whatever. Those buckets, there's things in those buckets that can't be used for staff. So it's not like there's this money. Why aren't you using that money for, that's like the appropriation for the seats in the auditorium. That's an appropriation that we're going out to bid, and that's for utilities and for facilities. That's not money that's available for other purposes. So there are different, which is why Bob talked about the different budgets. There's money in grants. That money's very specific on how it gets used. You know, and when you're audited, you better make sure you used it for either the staff or the technology or whatever else that it was meant to be used for. I would yeah. like to just say I, I really thank the council for really their vision of what Fitchburg is. And I think, um, you know, as somebody who does have school-age children, um, but also somebody who owns a home here and has to go to events where a lot of people in the past have choiced their children out of the district and, and talked to me about it and wonder how could I ever keep my kids in this district. It's not just an issue to the schools, it's an issue to the city, mm -hmm. and it's an issue to my property values, um, and I think to everybody's property value, but beyond that, just a real commitment to the city that you live in. So I think, so I really do wanna thank um, the city council and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for really recognizing that that isn't only a benefit to the schools, though it certainly is. Um, it is really um, a reflection of what this city represents, in, in my view. And I, but I'd also like to ask that figure about transportation, Bob. Mm -hmm. So those are contracts, right? Those are, that's based on, like we know that that's Our the yellow bus contracts yeah. plus our special education contracts. And that's contracts. definite, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay. But uh, just, it, it really, things don't move ahead because going back just to those memorial seats, our facilities committee going on almost eight years ago and nothing has moved until the mayor in you know with his leadership and the council who was very concerned about education uh, got this to move so I mean we're we're very fortunate to have that leadership we've been talking about that for years yeah so yeah I guess maybe you know to look at it another way um, this is probably the first non bonding capital investment that the city has made at least in my nine years here and this, Everything this else is has this is the people's money this is the right. this right. is available funds because we've managed mm -hmm. and this is a credit to the finance team mm -hmm. in City Hall the way we've managed the budget and you're gonna see it in this upcoming budget as well so a lot, a lot of help, a lot of, uh, a lot of effort, and good people behind it. I just want to echo that. Um, <clears throat> I, I think that um, the presentation to the city council, there was overwhelming support uh, by the city council, and they recognized that these two projects, especially the South Street Wall and, and Memorial Seating, had been projects that were outstanding for some time, and recognized the importance of each of those. So again, you know, kudos to the. Mayor's office, the finance team, and the city council for recognizing us. Well, and it's all the work that people don't realize all the work that goes on at the office to do that. Because if you're going to present that, you've got to go out to bids. You've got to have engineers come in. You've got to find out how much this stuff costs. We had no idea how much that cost, that retaining wall. Okay. Uh, it was shocking when we saw the numbers. But, you know, <coughs> you've seen it. It's collapsing. It needs to be totally excavated. Then you have to figure out, when are we going to do this? That's one of the main parking lots at South Street Elementary. So now you've got to figure out where you're going to go out to bid. When are they going to start the work? And they better have it done by the time school starts or, you know, I, I'm going to be losing a lot of sleep at night. So there, and it's not just on our side, but it's also on the city side, you know, at the, um, at the purchasing office. And, and I don't have a lot of patience sometimes, and I'm like, why don't we have this yet? But there are processes that you have to go through, you know, um, step by step. Okay. So uh, what I tried to do here is really just summarize um, where the funding is coming from on, on the city budget um, and where it's going. So every year when we begin the budget rollover process, we look at, okay, what obligations or commitments uh, do we have to fund next year? 
So, you, you know, just starting, uh, I'll say, with the largest dollar items. Uh, our special education tuition number is increasing by 2.2 million from last year's budgeted special education tuitions. Okay. Our, our contracts, all our teacher contracts, para, custodian, all the contracts are going to increase uh, by $1.2 million next year. And lastly, then we have uh, our indirect expenses, uh, which are going to increase around 300000 And And I should say that's, that's after an offset of uh, about 550000 for health insurance, which our grants are absorbing, and they absorbed this year as well. So this year, we actually had a structural change uh, whereby grants and the food service revolving account um, picked up health insurance for those staff. Okay. So to meet our, our commitments for next year of $3.7 million, again, the good news, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we had 111 more students uh, enrolled in the district uh, for which we received Chapter 70 funding. And then what we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more are uh, reductions, uh, you know, actions that we have uh, looked at uh, over the last, you know, really almost four months now since the governor's budget was announced um, to have a balanced budget going into next year. So just to simplify it, bottom right-hand corner, our, our, that's how much our budget is increasing from 2017 to 2018, 3,700,000. First column, first number is, that's the number we got from the state for our enrollment increase. Had there not been an enrollment increase, that would have been smaller or nothing. So now, subtracting those two, we still have a deficit. So when we started working on this a few months ago, we still had a deficit of $1.4 million. And that's what we have been working on. Because the left column and the right column, for me to come here tonight, has to be balanced. I just have a question on the yep. special education tuition. Mm -hmm. Did that number increase because more kids are going to um, special education schools, or is it because their tuitions have increased? All of the above. Both. All of the above. Okay. And Both. special education tuitions are increased at any time of the year for any reason, with no input from any of the <coughs> clients. Uh, and they can increase twice in a year. Um, and then, or in some tuitions, you could inherit a tuition for a special education student and actually never see that student with a family that moves into your city. And if they're in an outside placement of $180,000, you inherit the, the bill for $180,000 the following year. So some of that is predictable and some of it is not. Okay. So uh, next couple slides, we're going to provide you some detail on the savings, I guess, um, just really the savings and then uh, the adjustments, which Andre will talk about. So um, not to sound like a broken record here, but, uh, you know, in, in addition to being green uh, and putting solar panels on roofs, uh, it's going to save some green here. So. Um, we project about a $78,000 savings next year on our electricity from that. Uh, the second item um, with regards to uh, solar and credits, um, the city entered into a um, supply agreement with a, a solar developer in a neighboring town who had to uh, sell his power to a municipality and um, the mayor and his team are allocating about forty thousand dollars savings. We have to identify one uh, one of our sites, which was wasn't too hard. The high school will receive uh, the credit, that forty thousand dollars credit. Uh, and again, the the, the mayor uh, has been leading the Green Communities uh, Initiative for the city, and uh, his chief of staff, A.J. Terigny. Um, and about a week or so ago, we finalized the project. Uh, that'll be undertaken with the, this year's, I guess, initial green communities funding at Long's Joe for some steam traps, uh, some heating infrastructure upgrades, and also some lighting upgrades. So we project that'll s generate about $40,000 of savings next year. Uh, the next item 
uh, is our electricity supply. Uh, there was about an eight and a half percent decrease on the kilowatt per hour price. Um, our city procurement uh, lead, <coughs> uh, Mary Delaney, went out to bid as our contract was expiring this year through power options. So we, we're projecting about a $40,000 savings there. So just on electricity alone, and it's almost, uh, you know, and solar and uh, investments with green community, that's almost $200,000. So um, again, we thank the- It's credit mayor. to you too, Bob. Yeah. You did a lot of hard work yeah, on, uh, on a number of these projects. So we, again, we appreciate that. AJ, though. and I should, uh, again, <clears throat> sh uh, give credit to uh, the city solicitor as well, because he was yeah. very involved on the, uh, the panels Team here. Effort. Total yep. team effort. Um, then the next item, uh, the actually the busing contract, we're adjusting based on uh, what the what the contract uh, rate will be for next year. Uh, we actually reduced a bus uh, this fiscal year. We went down one bus, uh, and one of the reasons that allowed us to do that was uh, to have a consistent start and dismissal time over at McKay, which at the beginning of the year caused <laughs> a little bit of. A uh, few phone calls. Yeah, a few phone calls, a little bit more traffic on Lower Ridge Road. <laughs> uh, but again, we've been able to look at that number very closely and look at what it will be for next year. Uh, and lastly, um, this year we funded about $160,000 of capital from the school building maintenance um, budget. Uh, so those items... Um, will not be reoccurring and um, again um, we're thankful for the mayor's and the city's support for the capital projects and again that frees up uh, flexibility so we don't have to um, look at additional options that we're going to talk about in just a few couple minutes here but all in all all those actions resulted in about a little over half a million dollars of savings and that's why this is months of working and looking a lot of these solar things a lot of these energy things these are many many meetings that have taken place between us also proactivity of going after these solar panels putting them on our roofs there's a, this is not just money that's falling in our lap it's money that's taken a lot of work the busing contract you know we worked hard with McKay Arts Academy to say is there a way we knew we could save a lot of money if we could get the school to go on one and you know there were a lot of upset people for that first month I received a lot of pretty nasty phone calls but as I look at this and say if, if it ended up that we saved the hundred and seventy two thousand dollars in busing that's quite a few staff positions so that's the kind of work that goes on in the office as we try to balance a budget you know and and stay within our budget of net school spending so that's we went there first where are the places what can we save to try to address that I deficit guess, of I one just before you go million. on to uh, you know having the budget schedule uh, as we are starting it tonight uh, some of these numbers weren't finalized until the last few weeks so had we not had any um, certainty around these you know from this list of savings it would have gone into uh, or potentially have gone into the next page so we wanted to maximize uh, non-staffing related adjustments as much as possible so this is now the staffing adjustments that we're looking at um, the first is its central office uh, I'm recommending uh, reducing an administrator at central office and a cler half a point five clerical position and that's a total reduction of $115,708. Um, we have made some changes. I'm reorganizing the enrollment center. Uh, we've moved, uh, I moved Bonnie Bear Cmac, who is our ELL director. She used to have some enrollment responsibilities. ELL is one of our target areas that we need to focus on for academics. Uh, that's a subgroup that we've had some challenges with. So we've totally focused on that. And then there was a .2 part-time position in there that I'm not going to be uh, filling. And, and you can see the, the um, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's that, all right. So the ones without parentheses are my additions. So what we're gonna do there is we, we removed a, an administrator out of that office. And now there are some 
part-time administrative responsibilities that need to be done. So the clerical folks in that office do all of the management of the day-to-day -day enrollment. But then there are times when people are asking to change schools, they're asking for special conditions in a particular school. Those are not decisions that, you know, that an, an, an administrative assistant uh, should be making. Those are decisions that need somebody to meet with the principal, find out about the situation or whatever. So I've put in a point two part-time position of an administrator that would come in once a week, twice a week, and find out, okay, what are the cases that are being worked on this week, talk to the principals, talk to the parents, and then make determinations. Because we have inter, inter or intra, I can never remember which one, <laughs> when it's in the district. Yes. In the district. Intra? In the district. Intra. Intra. Intra school choice. So somebody can be in a, a school and ask, to, you know, by school choice to go to a different school. The next one is um, at Fitchburg High School, um, a teacher um, reduction, a clerical reduction, a para reduction. Um, this is still in conversation. Uh, I'm still working with the principals. So all of this is where I'm looking to go, but we're still in conversation about the specific positions, <coughs> the specific locations, things like that. Um, at Goodrich Academy, we've had a point two tutor, and in discussing with the principal there, that because of other resources that are available, they don't need that. I met with all the principals, we looked at all of their staffing, uh, I said, okay, where are you? We printed out the, the enrollment at every school. We printed out the per pupil at every school. We printed out how many FTEs at every school. And then I'm trying to look at how do I get to that number, you know, having a good knowledge of what the needs are at each school. Uh, we have a retirement of an ESL teacher at Memorial that we will not be replacing. We have... Um, Memorial's enrollment is such, we've looked at every single school for class size, printed out all of the data, and we've seen that there are two schools where we have to add a teacher because the group that's moving up, the class is moving up, and there are fewer sections at the next level than there are now. So when you move them up, you have to add a teacher to pick up that amount of uh, student body. And sometimes, if the class that was before them is smaller, you get to say, oh, good, we'll take that one and move it over here. But the classes, as you know from enrollment coming up, are all greater. So they're all larger class sizes. The small class sizes now are at the end of the line, but all the ones coming up are in the 400s. Whereas at one point, they were down in the mid threes. So that's a memorial uh, teacher, that's an addition. At Crocker and McKay, we're making a reduction of two ESL teachers. So again, we looked at the population, the student population at ESL, and the, the teachers needed to be assigned to that. Crocker is the other school that we have to add a teacher because of the class size. Um, the issue we're gonna have very soon is, even if I wanna add a teacher, there are no rooms. In some of the schools, we're already putting health teachers on a cart. You know, we might have to put art on a cart at some point. Uh, any of those um, electives. But anybody who's been a school principal knows that's a wave that comes and goes. Um, then at Rheingold Elementary, uh, we're doing a reduction of a math specialist. At, and in special education, uh, we're looking at a savings of about $250,000, and that's going to be uh, Paris on attrition. Uh, there's a BCBA at Rheingold is being moved to a grant, so I can take that out of the city salary. And um, the reductions of Paris will all be determined as they, over the summer, look at the caseloads, and Paris are assigned by IEP. So it's not any other way other than a reduction based on IEPs. And then uh, we're looking at a staff restructuring in the clerical. Uh, this is still in negotiations. We've assigned a number to it, but that is 
something that's still in flux, uh, still being worked on. Uh, and then at the McKay Arts Academy, um, what we did, because they're in an innovation school, we looked at a number of positions that had been absorbed by the city over, uh, over time that were really the responsibility of the school. So we looked at some of that, and then we also looked at a reduction based on per pupil and class size. But because it's an innovation school, we just gave them a number, and the school will decide how they're going to meet that number. Um, in terms of what impact this might have on layoffs, there are very few of these positions that would require a layoff because of the nature of the positions. There will be other positions open in the district. So two things. One, it would not impact layoffs and it will not impact unemployment because folks will move into another position somewhere in the district. Before I move off this slide, are there any specific questions about this? Yes. Um, so nine para positions that, so is that based on a historical estimate about what fluctuating, you know, what, what fluctuates in any given year? I mean, to me, special ed is the thing that continues to grow, so I'm kind of curious how you got to nine. Um, Alicia and Rowan go over every single IEP. That's what they've been doing for a whole month, looking at every IEP at every school, what's in the pipeline, and also what we have for staffing. And based on that examination, you know, they said we can look at the reduction of nine paras in special education. But we never know who's moving in in the summer. A absolutely. I mean, we have cut paras in the past, and then we've had two people move in with an IEP that says they need a para. Legally, we have no choice but to put a para, which is how we've ended up with budget deficits sometimes of $500,000. Because this is based on what we know now with the population that's in our school now. But not, not every sped kid needs a parent. Right. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, yeah. okay. And then we've had, uh, we've had positions know. where we've, we've moved a position from one school to the next because a student who has a one-on-one -on -one para goes from elementary to middle school or goes from middle school to the high school, and the para is not assigned to the school. It's assigned to the student. So the para goes with the student. Of these um, recommendations, do these all represent people who got pink slips or like no. So, okay. no, because we're not even at that point. We're going to be meeting um, tomorrow. This, tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> we're meeting tomorrow to now start looking at because all of this is based on what are the positions open, <clears throat> where are positions. The paras all have one year contracts, so they're they start over every year, and then we start assigning. Uh, Paris. But you can see here, for example, uh, a math specialist reduction at Rheingold, that could be an elementary teacher who's certified and would take the new job at Crocker. I'm using that as an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, it becomes a, a real chess game as we move people around. I mean, I've had years where we've had to cut 35 positions and we've spent a month just trying to figure out where everybody goes. This is nothing compared to what we've had to do other years in terms of how do we manage to provide opportunities for all the, the, the folks. And as you know, in terms of our new staff last year, we had, what, 40 new staff members? We had 40 new positions, new positions but people yeah. leave, people retire. I think we're up to a half a dozen retirees right now. Um, people get married. People move to another state. So there are positions that open all the time. Yep. So right now, our projection, and for example, the um, one of the positions is already not filled. There's no one in. There's a couple of these. Yeah. There's a few of these positions that were mid-year retirements, and we didn't fill them. So there's nobody in those positions. So that reduction isn't a person right now. It's the reduction of a position. Yes. Um, so I, I guess what I'm hearing is that um, what you're saying is that this is not 
carved in stone. This, you're, 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 you're saying you're looking at yeah. yes. this, so this is not. Well, also, it's not carved in stone because it's your budget and your, right. so this is my first, this is our first blush. Here's what we're thinking. Right. Okay. Um, this is what we'd like to do. And, you know, you, there could be things you like or don't like, or have you thought of this, have you thought of that, uh, you know, whatever. Um, so this is not finalized until we come for the third time. And at that point, you'll have a MUNIS budget, which will be the detailed budget for every school. It'll have assignments of staff to every school. And then even that one, over the summer, the, the numbers won't change, but the names could change. Um, in terms of the grants, everything is still in flux. Um, it is a roller coaster. We never know what grant is going to be cut, what grant, you know, the federal budget process has not finished yet. There's a budget that went out there. No one seems interested in that budget. So then it goes to the House, it goes to the Senate. Uh, we hear rumblings all the time about the revenue in Massachusetts is not what they thought it was going to be. You know, the drums start pounding. I, I could get a memo, I, you know, an email tomorrow that says we're cutting your Chapter 70 by however much. It still has to go to the Senate, and then it goes to the Joint Committee, which you know well what that's like, and then a final number will come out. So this is our best estimate based on what we know today. So shift back. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, as uh, we were talking earlier just about where we look to end up for next year. And again, uh, as Andre just said, it's, uh, it's a moving target. So we look at uh, having about $5.9 million in grant funding for next year. So that's the, the blue bar farthest on your right. If you look back at the blue bar on the farthest on your left, that's FI08. So we had over $8 million back then. So after 08, you had the election, the economic meltdown, the recession. There was a lot of stimulus money that came into the, the school district. The orange is the stimulus money. Oh, okay, thank so you. So that's, that's, that's the spike, okay? So we had that. So we utilized those funds, and there were carryover uh, allowances. So we really had that for five years, okay, the, the orange, orange top, so to speak, here as you look at it from a distance. Uh, but next year's grant funding is projected to be about two million, a little more than two million dollars less than the grant funding in 08 before there was any stimulus. So we're at, you know, 75% of where we were eight years ago, or 10 years ago, I should say. Okay. So, and, and I think, you know, what needs to not be taken for granted is that through all of this, where a lot of those columns went down, we're still offering a comprehensive program. We're still offering opportunities for students with advanced learning. We're still offering sports. We're still offering music and art and all of those kinds of things. Summer you programming, know, summer technology. Programming. The goal, we've been investing in technology. The goal has been, no matter what the cuts are, how do we keep a viable school district going that's offering all of the things that our students uh, need and deserve? So going back to our conversation about uh, special education, again, as I mentioned earlier, the tuitions, um, again, the budget uh, in, is in blue, red is actual. So when you look at last year's blue FY17 to next year's, again, it's about $2.2 .2 million. Okay. And when you look at this year, you'll, you'll notice that the, uh, the red bar, the actual, is higher than the blue. And how do we do that? Uh, that's what's called the circuit breaker carryover. Yeah. So that carryover is help that and, and to be clear, the, free, the transfer of some of the capital investment from the schools to the city. So it's a combination of those two items is allowing us to and this year and potentially carry over some uh, funding for next year. Okay. So these are the updates from the technology department. Um, 
we finally completed um, if you I think there's one of those little boxes here somewhere the little white boxes we've kind of finally networked all of the city uh, all of the school department there's a district-wide wireless um, and that was we used e-rate money to fund that 85 percent of that funding was from e-rate we deployed 650 additional Chromebooks. Uh, this was either purchased through grants or through school choice. Um, 30 unit carts at the elementary, middle school storage boxes, um, the Honors Academy, and then this year was the first year that I wanted to do a one-on-one -on -one program for our seniors. Uh, we have districts around us that have one-on-one -on -one with all students. That, that would be a goal but that's an expensive goal. And then Goodrich Academy, we provided them with additional uh, uh, Chromebooks and storage. We deployed um, 3D printers, four of them, at Fitchburg High School, uh, two at Lonjo Middle School and at the Memorial Middle School. So in terms of what are other districts doing and do we have the same resources that any other district worth its salt has, the answer is yes, we do. And then uh, the virtual reality kits, 30 units, uh, five, uh, five pieces to each and 30, uh, 30 units, five um, groups of those. And then just in other technology, um, at Fitchburg High School, we're up to 100 megabits uh, shared, 400 uh, uh, megabits is what we've predicted as we increase that, the increasing the bandwidth, that will happen in July. So the bandwidth, because people are online and using video and other things which take more bandwidth. So let me just, let me just yep. uh, interject there. Uh, our contract for, with our current provider of you know, high broadband services expired. And this is uh, something that is funded by E-rate. So our reimbursement on this, again, I think is around 87%, Eileen. And uh, again, as Andre mentioned, the uh, you know, students are bringing more devices, uh, there's more applications, more video, we're using more uh, software applications, uh, really going to have uh, more state, again, allow more uh, content to come into the schools. Uh, so. And, uh, and as you know, we're moving towards fully online assessment for the um, MCAS 2.0. So we have to be ready for that. We actually did it this year for the grades that have already been tested. Um, things went incredibly well. Uh, Eileen and her team are unbelievable uh, what they're able to accomplish uh, in the technology area for us. We're expanding our online learning platforms. We're actually moving from an online learning platform now called Plato, <coughs> and our goal is to move to a platform called EduQuest. We've been piloting that at Goodrich Academy, uh, and it's a much richer um, um, online platform and uh, we're hoping uh, to go to that uh, this fall. Um, the uh, Comprehensive EdTech PD Professional Development Suite and then the expansion of using Google Apps more and then 3D printer uh, and augmented reality and virtual reality. So funding challenges. So, uh, I guess yeah, again you know, given what we've already shared, you know, we have a high reliance uh, on the Commonwealth for Chapter 70 funding. Um, this year's rollout of the uh, early childhood literacy that we kicked off a couple of weeks ago up at Fitchburg High, the Footsteps to Brilliance, was really um, only possible because we were able to partner with other institutions, Fitchburg State, uh, a couple private foundations. Uh, we made a contribution towards that, but excluding our contribution, we've been able to, we raised 137000 uh, last year to get that program going. Um, again, you know, the, the challenges of Fitchburg, as with any other district that you read about in the paper that's uh, contiguous to us, you know, the needs of the students there, whether it be the social, emotional needs in the, you know, in the classrooms, in the schools, or if they require uh, out of district placement or transportation are increasing. And again, just kind of as a general uh, category uh, on the indirect expense side is the health insurance. And I mean, Footsteps to Brilliance is another example, like the solar 
power. You know, three years ago, I wanted to do that. I was there was no way I could take two hundred thousand dollars out of our budget. What was I going to increase class size? What would we do? So that was a lot of work, and a lot of it, you know, is Bob's work on reaching out to the Wallace Foundation, to different uh, organizations, telling them about what we're doing, getting them involved, and that those foundations and those partners are paying $137,000 of the $200,000 that we're putting out to provide this literacy for the whole city, not just for the Fitchburg Public Schools. So here are the things that are still out there. Yeah, it's still out there. Again, kind of just like this kind of our, the wrap-up stage here. We're in the home stretch. Um, again, the grant funding, still waiting to find out what the details will be. As Andre mentioned, um, there was an article in the Globe uh, last night today. Uh, this year, the state is facing, I think, about a little over $400 million budget gap. There's talk at the state level about uh, potentially some type of taxes, what it, whether it'll be the millionaire's tax. There's, you know, the Foundation Budget Review Committee that uh, has been around um, lobbying for more funds for education and uh, transportation infrastructure, which may be funded by that tax if it, if it goes <coughs> forward. Uh, again, we're every day uh, we learn some new information um, and we adjust our budget accordingly. So really what you have on the, in this hearing is the, the best information and best projection of what we have as of today, but that could change tomorrow. And, and again, there's still, um, as Andre mentioned, we're still in some discussions and negotiations uh, with some uh, people in units. Um, and again, we have retirements, non-renewals, new hires, just kind of the normal ebb and flow of staff turnover. And um, again, just moving sometimes, as we mentioned, there's one case, people moving from one bucket to another from city to grants or school choice or in between. That can all happen. Um, we'll see how, how it all unfolds here over the next few months. And, and again, just kind of as a, a reminder and a, a wrap up on, on the calendar, tonight is the first hearing. And uh, a little bit different um, schedule at City Hall. Historically, uh, each department is presented. The mayor has a much more uh, consolidated schedule. We're in two weeks. Um, he, the mayor and his finance team will present the budget to the city council. Uh, then that will be referred to the finance committee two weeks after that on June 13th where they'll meet. And then uh, immediately if, after that finance committee meeting, they will approve the budget. Uh, but we'll be back here uh, on June 5th for the second budget hearing. Um, and then on the 19th and probably a little bit before then, uh, we'll prepare the the annual budget book along with the detailed uh, line item budget by each school and department so that's where we end up any questions on um, the school choice million dollar figure, mm -hmm. right um, mm -hmm. which I know is small in comparison to all the other mm -hmm. things but um, are we seeing, with the enrollment increase, are we seeing less people leave the district? Are we, like, so we've always, it seems like since I've been looking at these budgets, we've had two million go out and one million come in. Mm -hmm. It stayed pretty, it has stayed for the last four or five years, it's pay, stayed pretty steady. Yeah. If there's a shift, it's in like a single digit shift. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the rate of de, uh, out has slowed down uh, dramatically. dramatically. Okay, thanks. Uh, and, and I think that's due to the fact that we've maintained a comprehensive program Absolutely. and we've added what needed to be added. And, um, you know, I think we saw it at the Scholars Dinner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my 12 years here, that was double the size of the most Scholars Dinners that I've gone to. Oh, yeah. That's 30 right. students. Mm -hmm. I was just scholars curious. Scholars Dinners were like 12 to 15 students. I was just curious if some of that tick up of enrollment is something that we're starting to really see change in people going out. <laughs> so, but we wouldn't yeah, see I, it I that think, way. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think they're, I think they're unrelated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, our, you know, our turnover rate just in general with our students, um, you know, and, you know, Fitchburg's affordable 
um, vis a vis, you know, our, our local uh, peer communities. Um, you know, there are a lot of reasons. You know, when we had the, this uh, architectural study done a year or so ago, we had people look at it. And again, I think part of it is that affordability issue and then just kind of the natural turnover. Uh, but so far, th that turnover has worked out in our favor yeah. in terms of increased enrollment. Well, so. I think one of the things, we're keeping <coughs> students here. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It's not so much getting them back, but people who did move out, if they're in seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth grade, they're not moving back. Yeah. You know, so it's we need to maintain our students that we have, right? And instead of worrying about coming back, but we have had, I w and I just look at the closer, but we've had a little bit of an uptick in people coming back for their high school experience yeah. here. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that we have some pretty unique offerings at the high school that are very attractive to some parents if you're looking for a STEM program or the Honors Academy, um, there's some real options there. Yeah, I look back, we lost six students to Oakmont. It was strictly about la lacrosse. Well, remember that when I came and said we need in, to put lacrosse you know, so. in, and you all said, yep, let's put lacrosse yeah. in. Hmm. We talk to students right now that yeah. are here because we put lacrosse in. Yeah. We would have lost, I would say, probably overall at least a dozen students. Yeah. The teams were. Mm. A team's mm -hmm. worth had mm -hmm. we not put in yeah. lacrosse. So that may seem frivolous from an outsider to say, why are you doing that? Why are you spending money on sports? Twelve students who stay here times six thousand yeah. yeah. is, you know, more than a teacher's salary. Yeah. So every, uh, you know, every six students that we keep here, you know, that's, that pays off. That investment, you know, keeps paying off. Do we see less and less kids going to the charter school? That seems, I think, Does that stay I mean, steady? You know, is that number pretty steady, the number of students going to the charter school? You know, I don't have that information off the top of my head, okay. but I can certainly get that for you. Right. Yeah, I think if I can just add, and this has been uh, an issue at the state level, um, is the state has not been able to fulfill its charter school reimbursement for a few years now. So, uh, and again, that's in the indirect charge, just, mm -hmm. just to be clear, the school choice out and the charter school tuitions are in that $17 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, as part of the charter school formula uh, for reimbursement, there's a you know, graduated scale, so to speak. But now, oh, well, I think for the last three years, and my guess would be this year as well, given what, you know, where the state is at, the city will not receive that full projected reimbursement as they you know, project on cherry sheets. But Again, who knows? We'll see. And Mayor, I sent you an email this afternoon mm -hmm. of um, some other superintendents who are working with their mayors yeah. to put a proposal forward to the state, especially from the gateway cities. Uh, there was other things in there. They, um, one of them is the uh, eligibility issue, which hit places like Brockton. I mean, they've got $16 million yeah. deficits right. because right. of the yeah. change. Mm -hmm. It didn't hit us that way. Yeah. Uh, but one of the recommendations we're putting in there is that the state fund the charter school reimbursement like they said they would at 100%. That would make an incredible difference. So when that comes around, I'm sure we want to be on board with that letter. There's a look, they're looking at the foundation budget on Beacon Hill, aren't they? The, uh, yeah, it's, the yeah, increased they're budget. They're looking yeah, at I know. It. <laughs> well, but that, you know, that's more than they've yeah. ever done in the past. You yeah. couldn't even get them yeah, to the right. table. Yeah. Well, it was interesting that the millionaire tax was, was in the article today. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. yeah. that actually, for a lot of people, has more legs and actually has more public support. When they've done surveys and polls, the millionaire tax has more public support than you know, than the looking at the the Chapter 70 formula because the issue with the Chapter 70 formula is you're going to give to Peter to take away from Paul. Mm -hmm. That's where it hits a wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you redo a formula, somebody's going to gain in the formula, and someone else is going to lose, and that's when you know every town's rep starts to get active. Yeah. So this is just the first blush. As you think about this and look at it, if you have other ideas, if you have questions, just email them to me. Um, and if there's stuff that you'd like to have incorporated in the second presentation when I come back, 
we can look at that. Okay. Questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have action items to vote on. I'm going to bundle them. 17-850 yes. up through and including 17-855. Motion to bundle those items and approve Second. Them Wait, motion made. I'm and sorry. Motion made. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, were we, did, it, did you need to review that school committee meeting calendar at all or did we? I thought we had. You know, I don't see it on here as a vote. So, uh. I think yeah, she was just. Like, yeah, action item. Is it a vote? Is a vote required on that? Have the agenda in front of me. Yeah. Seventeen eight fifty. Oh yeah, right. It's the first one. I mean, I don't personally have any questions about that calendar, but I didn't know if we should. <laughs> what, what, what you've What's already your wish? Had it come before you, I think, for two readings. Okay. All right. So it's just the draft. Of it. We've had okay. a second on the bundling. All right. So, uh, second to bundle. 17-850 up through and including 17-855. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? It's unanimous. So I'll motion to approve those. Motion. Motion made and second. Seconded to approve 17-850 up through and including 17-855. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? It's unanimous. No need for executive session. Do I hear a motion, motion adjourn? for adjournment? Motion made to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>